Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Moments on Wednesday night. It's been awesome so far. Every so night great. that we've had Moments, it's just been incredible and so just great to be with family, great to be with, with you guys online, live, and uh, there's just nothing better. And so we've been enjoying it. And again, Moments is all about building momentum for our lives, building yeah. momentum for your lives. So we hope that all that we do, the conversations that we have and the gold that comes out of this guy, um, just adds momentum to your family, to your career, to your workplace, to your job, to, to your relationships, um, just because we want to see growth. We want to see our church flourish. And yeah. so we're just trying to do our part to add, to have moments that add momentum to your life. And we would have already gone over wins today earlier um, in, the, in the night, but um, we, I wanted to share a win that's super special to me. Yeah, um, tell us, and tell us champ. Yeah, absolutely. So we just had our birthday party on Sunday night uh, for our Champion Youth Ministry. And um, it was such a good time. We did it YouTube live. Uh, and so we had so much engagement on the chat. We had games, we had giveaways for, for the teens. We were able to bless some teens. We had an awesome word and we were able to break out into small groups as well on Zoom. And so it was just such a cool time that even though we've been able, or even though we've been isolated and separated, you know, and specifically for youth, we've been able to, we were able to pull off this event and it was such a good time and I enjoyed it. And it's just the start of uh, stuff that we can do. So great, so, I love, I love Champion Youth. Yeah. I love the name, I love the spirit of it. I love the concept of, we're champions in Christ yeah. and champions for Christ. And he's our champion, has gone before us, given us the victory, yep. it is finished. Like we're more than conquerors. And boy, I really love moments too. Yeah. I love these moments. This is like moments number three, right? Something three or four. Like <laughs> and um, it's the, it really is building momentum. And mm -hmm. it's taken me like three weeks to get this seven yeah. secrets of happiness. We've been and, close every yeah. time. <laughs> you know, we came, because we don't get started on the point until like 10 minutes left and then I zoom through them. <laughs> so I got a couple more for you guys. But um, this is really a intimate time together. Yeah. And really with all that's gone on in the world, unprecedented as everybody knows, we don't know the source of everything. We don't know what's behind it all, but we know that God seizes these moments. God seizes these opportunities to yeah. bring his will to pass in our lives. And, you know, you shared about the win of um, Champion Youth. And of course, we have a win just being with you guys and being connected. Yeah. And I feel closer to you guys. I keep running into, by the way, I keep running into church members at the gas station. Every time <laughs> I'm pulling up for gas, somebody yells out, hey, pastor. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's just so heartwarming to be able to see people yeah. again and to and to feel that connection but I feel so connected I feel so connected to you guys and more connected I'm praying for you more I'm thinking about you more I'm preparing because I want every word to land on you right I want every word to matter yeah. I don't want to lose your attention uh, boy there's so many reasons why this has drawn us closer right. and made us closer and by the way another win that I want to share and and believe with you as well you shared about the win of champion youth and the win of our moments, but also listen to this testimony from somebody that said, uh, I called the church this past week just to express my gratitude. I started attending Life Changers for the first time right before the pandemic hit. I'm also celebrating 22 years of sobriety from wow. heroin and cocaine. Wow. From heroin and those are such powerfully addictive drugs and Elaine has been so Beautiful. sober for 22 years. Beautiful. I just want to congratulate you. I hope you're watching Elaine. And she said, it's an honor that I get to sow my seed here in this house. Amazing. And um, wow. That's such I just, a win. It, it really is. Yeah. To, and to see people's lives change like this. And another one that said, uh, another lady, Corrine said, wow, I have been homeless, but thanks to you and your prayer warriors praying with me, I move into my new home next week. Come on. Wow. Thank you very much, Pastor. I'm also, I'm also a recovering addict, she wow. said. So we're just so proud of you yeah. and so thankful for you. And I'm so glad that the church is a big enough tent to include everyone who's going through whatever you're going through. You're welcome here. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. Lord, yeah. for all those mm. that are struggling with any addiction right now, we just agree. Joseph and I agree. Yeah. 
for deliverance and healing in Jesus name. Lord, we just agree for every person who may be suffering from any addiction, whether it's drugs, whether it's pornography, whatever it is, we thank you, Lord. There's no condemnation. There's no shame. Yeah. But Lord, there's nothing but the blood of Jesus yeah. cleansing, healing, setting free from addictions. Every one of us knows somebody who's addicted to something. So I want you to pray for them. Just call their name out right at your home. Call their name out, Susie or Bobby or whoever it is. We just agree for their deliverance. Yes. We agree for their freedom. He who the sun sets free is yeah. free indeed. Nothing has to have bondage over you. Sin shall not be your master. Addiction shall not be your master. Jesus is Lord yep. and everything is going to be all right in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, bring us so into good. this moment, champ. Yeah. Bring us into this uh, this this momentum yeah, today. Yeah, I mean, this is this series has been awesome. All about um, enjoying life in every season, uh, yeah. raising ourselves to live happy lives, and and uh, for families, for parents, raising kids to in a, in a home and a happy home and a yeah. happy family, which is so awesome. Um, and so it's been amazing, and I hope that you recap some of the points yeah. um, that Let's we already it. went over, but. <laughs> I did want to emphasize one Please, point that you made from it, last week, last Wednesday night, um, which was so powerful because it really resonates with um, our current times and, and it, just anything that has to do with equality will always, you know, resonate right now more than ever. But um, for sure. But you said like equality doesn't mean that we all ha we all are the same. And yeah. it, it kind of struck my thought, my uh, kind of struck me a little bit because I was like, oh, that's so interesting. And you said like equality is we, we do have equality in God's eyes. We have equality in our rights. Like every person should have the same rights. Yeah. But God has created us so uniquely and so individually yeah. um, for a certain purpose, a certain um, uh, plan, f like to glorify him. And we're his creation. And so I just thought that was so cool that um, like we don't have to strive to be the same yeah. as others. We can actually be proud and confident in who we are, like as unique individuals yeah, uh, in God's beautiful. creation, in God's image. Um, but we still have equality in God's eyes yeah, and access so to Him, His presence. And we should encourage that. We should celebrate the, the celebrate our celebrate diversity. The diversity. Yeah, yeah. So you I know, don't know. No, that's so good. I do, I, w I do want to say something about that, and and I really want to. I want you to know that this is a spiritual movement that God is bringing to pass in our world, a movement of equality. But equality does not mean that there's that that everybody's the same. It means that God created you individually and God wants us to celebrate our differences. Yeah. Uh, differences are not divisions. God wants us to have and God reminded me as I was praying for you this week, God reminded me of that word that differences are not divisions. We're going to have differences in our color. We're going to have differences in our upbringing. We're going to have differences in our politics. We're going to have differences in our business, in our finances, in our health, in our looks. Differences are not divisions. Our differences should not divide us. Good. Our differences should unite us because God really is a, a, a celebrator of your uniqueness right. and you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Those words are very powerful and I want you to realize how valuable you are. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you with such care and such respect. Fearfully is what that means. It's such respect that God has for you and wonderfully made like you're wonderful. Most people don't believe in themselves enough to really let their personality out. And we try to be conformed to, you know, to an image that people like or an image that we think people will like and you know, all that we need to do is just be ourselves because you're never going to be good at being somebody else. You'll only yeah. be second best at being somebody else because somebody else already is somebody else. <laughs> they're already nice. they're already number one at being them. <clears throat> and so you could only be number two at being them. So you might as well be number one at being you. Yeah. And that's the whole thing about individuality and, and that's why diversity. I'm so I'm so thankful to have grown up in this church and in an international church, because 
that's what all that's what we're all about yeah. celebrating each other ce yes. celebrating the differences not like we have unity we don't have division but we celebrate the differences that that set us apart you know because yeah. that's how god uh that's how god intended us to yeah. be set apart chosen and to be you know um designed a certain way to glorify him it's we're his art yeah. he created we us really we're are. made in his image and so there's not one piece of art that's better than the other it, right. it all reflects god's glory god's god's beauty and so that's so true that's why our church has been awesome for me these past 25 years because wow. that's the, the the outlook that i now have yeah you that's know? beautiful so. and that beauty is what draws people to God. Beauty is God's great evangelist. Mm. It's like the beauty of sunset, the beauty of relationships, the beauty of children, the beauty of your personality, your laughter, your laugh, your humor, your your warmth, your kindness, all your color. It's like all nobody wants just one color ice cream. <laughs> ice cream comes in so many different flavors, just like people come in so many different flavors. And, you know, I might as well, we could just talk about this all yeah, night. So I want to just back up a minute and just really zoom in on the four things we already yes. talked about. And then let me close this, this out, this series, and we'll get to some other stuff. Oh, next week's moments is going to be great. Oh, and this Sunday, I can't <laughs> wait till this Sunday. You're not going to want to miss a minute of it. We got it all. Yeah. We got wow. it all. <laughs> but um, so what we started with was First of all, happiness is God's idea, right? It's not this is not man. Man's idea wasn't happiness. God's idea was happiness. So we have to the most important thing we can give ourselves or give our children is a life of joy and uh, and to be intentional. You have to be intentional about being happy. There's so much in the world that can depress you and make you sad, make you discouraged. You have to make up your mind. You have to make a decision and be intentional. I'm going to be happy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to celebrate life in the midst of my enemies. I'm going to teach my children to celebrate my grandchildren to celebrate life, to be content in who they are. But you got to you got to like make up your mind mm -hmm. decision. And, and this maybe hopefully will last you the rest of your life. What I'm about to say decision is the doorway to reality. Decision is the doorway to reality. Wow. In other words, whatever reality you want in your life, you have to make a choice, a decision that you're going to walk in that. And it brings you into the reality of it. Just talking about it is one thing, but making a decision about it brings you into the reality of it. And you make a decision that you're going to get in shape or you make a decision that you're going to be kind when you make. You can't just accidentally be kind. You can't accidentally get in shape. You don't accidentally stumble into a gym. You have to make a decision. Decision so is the doorway to reality. So good. And um, and so that was the first point. And then the second point was to stop beating yourself up like the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Right. We're not made in the image of the devil to accuse ourselves. We're made in the image of God to approve of ourselves. God approves of you. So you approve of you. But when it comes to yourself, you got to Happy is the man. Romans 14, 22 is one of my favorite verses of all time. Happy is the man that does not condemn himself. Happy is the man that does not condemn himself, the man that does not beat himself up. Every child is so aware of their weaknesses and their flaws. You've got to teach your children not to condemn themselves because mm -hmm. it's so easy. And we're always hearing the devil's whispers to condemn you and to judge you and to accuse you. So raising happy children starts with raising children who believe what God says about them. So you got to believe what God says about you and then you can pass it on to your children and your grandchildren. Then thirdly, we talked about what you just already brought up, individuality and dignity. Second Corinthians 10 verse 12 says when we compare ourselves with ourselves, we're without understanding. Right. And comparisons <laughs> are really dangerous. A comparison is a trap. Mm -hmm. When you compare yourself to anybody, you're trapping yourself. You're you're holding yourself hostage and you can't be yourself. And freedom is really being yourself. That's when you're going to feel good is just being yourself and not having to keep up with other people. Um, but the, the scripture here says when we compare ourselves with ourselves, we're without understanding. And then if you parlay that over to Proverbs chapter three, it says happy is the one who gets understanding. So 
happiness flows from understanding and you lose your understanding when you compare yourself to other right. people. Like I think about you guys, all five of our children are like same last name, but every one of you is different. Every one of your different gifts, things that drive you are different, mm -hmm. your personality, what makes you happy, mm -hmm. the things that, that are specific to you. It's just the individuality of that yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. It's amazing. I Thank love you. it. Thank you. So, yeah, no, you're great. <laughs> Thanks for raising us up. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm doing my best. Um, so self-condemnation is the road, is the self-condemnation builds the road to unhappiness. And comparing yourself right. to others builds the road to unhappiness, the roadway right into unhappiness. So um, compare you despair. Yeah, if you compare, you despair. That's what Good you said word. Last week, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you compare, you despair. Mm -hmm. Number four, we gotta teach ourselves relational skills. Mm -hmm. Like relationship skills are something that is sorely lacking. I think that the one of the great sources of unhappiness in all of our lives is really the strife we have in relationships, mm -hmm. right? And the reason why there's so much strife in people's relationships is because they don't know how to resolve conflict. They don't know how to communicate effectively. Yeah. Communicate with emotion, we communicate with rage, we communicate with anger, we communicate with uncertainty, we communicate with a lot of ums and I'm not sure and, and you know, Guilty. <laughs> right? Hesitations and <laughs> pauses and, uh, you know, we, we're taught in school to read, we're taught to write, we're taught to speak, but we're not taught to listen. And if you, if you were to ask me, what are the most important relationship skills? Yeah. I would say listening is number one, being able to listen, um, empathy, mm. which is if you ever come across to somebody like, like, well, I know exactly how you feel. That's not empathy. Oh, I know exactly. How, no, empathy is like, man, there's no way I could ever really know mm. how you feel. Yeah. But man, I'm with you. I'm, I'm here to support you. I'm here to listen. That's empathy, right. but trying to say, oh, I, I know, it's just, it, it, what it does is it just runs over a person's emotions mm. and it silences them, Gotcha. right? And it says, I don't wanna hear any more you complaining. I know how it is. Oh, let me tell you about my problems. That's not empathy. That's a really good point. Empathy is just listen with intent to understand yeah. because that's how you build relationships is yeah. listening, understanding, so you can get into agreement yeah. and then have power because we're two of you agree about anything, <laughs> it shall be done, right? Awesome. So relationship skills start in, at the dinner table. Um, a study conducted by Columbia University showed that children who eat at least five meals a week, it doesn't mean five dinners a week, but five meals spread throughout the week. They, this is how the study came out. If they eat, at least five meals a week with their families, they're more likely to achieve higher grades in school and less likely <clears throat> to develop eating disorders wow. because you're eating around communication. Mm. You're eating not to, you're, you're feeling good from the company that you're with. You're not feeling good from the food, so you're not absorbed by the food, you're absorbed by the conversation. Nice. And that's really what <clears throat> really creates great relationship skills. That's awesome. where you guys learned, I think, <laughs> at the dinner table, yeah. right? There was a lot of, a lot of emotions, a lot of conflicts, a lot of resolution. Conflict that had to take resolution, place yeah. At the dinner table. <laughs> you get it fixed at the dinner table and it never, ever leaves your life. That's it good. never leaves your life. Um, so listening, empathy, respect, kindness, and like, like you already said, conflict resolving. These are the these are relationship skills, and part of relationship skills is self-relationship. Like, mm. you gotta have a good relationship with yourself. You gotta like yourself. And you gotta be self-aware, which is a whole nother issue about, which we'll get to. In fact, let's get to it right now. Cool. Um, it's called, I call it emotional intelligence. And emotional intelligence is what a lot of people lack. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't have self-awareness, so, so to me, Emotional intelligence means a couple things. It means emotional awareness, like you're able to be aware of, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm giving off some bad vibes. Right. 
um, I need to pull it back. Like that's self-awareness. I think a lot of people lack that mm -hmm. and you got to just ask God for that. God, give me awareness. Lord, awaken humility in me. Mm. And um, there's not there's no greater characteristic in a human being than humility. Like to me, a soft heart, a soft attitude, a soft spirit yeah. is really the greatest kind of person to be around. That's great. Someone who can take correction, someone who's not defensive, like let your guard down. This is why it's so important to be connected to community, connected to church family. That's why we want to hear from you. Like, yeah. let us know I'm watching. Here's where I'm watching from. I miss you guys. Like, we want to hear from you. So so here's I got boiled down emotional intelligence to the ability to identify your emotions, the ability to harness your emotions and the ability to problem solve mm. through your emotions. And I like to I, I like to make this rhyme. Emotional intelligence is the ability to frame your emotions, to name your emotions, and then you can tame your emotions. Framing it means to put this emotion in perspective, like calm down, Greg, you know, put this thing in perspective. You don't have to get bent out of shape over this. This is just somebody cut you off on the highway. It's not that big of a deal. Like that's framing the situation. Mm -hmm. Put it in perspective, then name it like, OK, I'm dealing with anger. I'm not going to pretend this isn't anger. So now I'm, I'm framing it, putting it in perspective. I'm naming it. I'm not denying it. And then I'm taming it. You can't tame what you don't frame and what you don't name. OK, you with me? This is emotional intelligence. Frame it, put it in perspective, name it. Don't live in denial. Then you can tame it and get it under control and harness it. Now, the opposite of mo emotional intelligence is really OK. Sorry for the you know, use of this word, but emotional stupidity, right? <laughs> what is if emotional intelligence is framing it, naming it and taming it, emotional stupidity or emotional unintelligence <laughs> is to blame, to shame and to maim. So if you so if you blame somebody, stupidest thing you can do, blaming other people for your problem, mm. like take responsibility and that's emotional intelligence. So I'm not going to blame you. God said to Adam, where are you? And Adam said, the, wo the woman that you gave me, she gave me. And then Class. he said, oh, OK, Eve, what happened to you? Oh, the serpent you put in the garden. So they all blamed right. Adam, blamed his wife. Eve blamed the devil. And we blame God. And so. When you just own it, this is how you're going to grow. Mm -hmm. You own your life. You say, you know what? I'm not going to blame anybody. And then I'm not going to shame anybody like shaming people is so it's such unloving yeah. behavior. Yeah, it's destructive. To, to, it's destructive to yeah. sh make a person feel shame for believing something different than you, for wanting something different than you, for having a different point of view than you. Like, like everybody needs to have the freedom to not live under the shame of your expectations or to be politically correct or to be right about you know, like you don't have to be. You can just you got to let people Give people room, give yeah. people space. Yeah, that's what. And then because when you when you blame people, when you shame people, you maim people, you you injure them, mm -hmm. which is what maiming is. So intelligence, emotional intelligence, frame it, name it, tame it, unintelligence, blame it, shame it, maim it. This is what damages relationships and damages your life is by um, not being intelligent, emotional with your not with your IQ, but with your EQ your emotional quotient, not your intelligent quotient. OK, that's um, so that's um, that's number five Four. or six or whatever we're on. Uh, let's see what got a few more minutes here. Um, let me let me give you the next one after relationship skills and emotional intelligence. Um, I believe that you got to get to the root of a problem. Mm -hmm. This is what really makes people happy. You know, some of the unhappiness in our lives is because we're living it at the surface, right? We're not drilling down and getting to the root of the problem. If you want better fruit, you got to deal with the root. That's good. So I, you're like that, man. You <laughs> just like go after 
the root of a problem. You don't stay on the surface. You like dive deep, like let's go deep. Let's address what's what's ever bothering you. Let's fix it. Let's grow like that's leadership. You just go deep and you and, and you get to the root of the problem. I think as a as a person, get don't live in the surface level. Be willing to be unafraid and dive deep and don't be worried about what you find in your soul because mm. God can heal it. Yeah. If you reveal it, you got to feel it. You got to reveal it and God can heal it. Man, we got some rhymes going <laughs> today. We got maim, shame, blame. We got tame, you know, name, right. frame. We got, you know, whatever else I just said. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> this is how to. But this is getting to the root of the problem. Go yeah. diving deep. Feel it. Reveal it to God and God will heal it. It's good. God can't heal what you don't reveal. No, that's good. You know, that's a that's an important point right there. Like 100%. God, God can only heal what you're willing to reveal. And I think sometimes we hide stuff because we're afraid God will reject us, which he won't. We're afraid God will be mad at us, which he's not. We're afraid that God won't um, he won't do it. He won't keep his promise, but he will. And even in a family setting, this is so important because people can't help if they don't know what's what's actually going on. That's right. You know, so with kids and I know with me growing up, like you, you guys couldn't really help me if I didn't if I wasn't open about what was actually that's right me or what I was actually struggling with. So this this point is massive. No, it's really it's really yeah. so true. And, and you know, we're so afraid sometimes to be transparent. And I think transparency is a precious, you know, really precious quality that's in a good. person is to be willing to let your guard down and know that no one's going to take advantage of you. And you have to be careful who you surround yourself with. Which I'm going to get to that point in a moment. Cool. But I want to get to the next point, yeah. um, which is we have to we have to inspire ourselves or our children to have faith and a winning attitude mm. like there's there's just so much magic when we have faith. There's just nothing is impossible to him that believes Jesus said. Yeah, there's nothing that you can't do. There's nothing that you can't achieve. There's nothing that can't work in your life if you just believe um, it says in in Philippians 413, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me like can't is the language of fools. Mm. Can't is the language of fools. Success doesn't come in can'ts. It comes in cans. <laughs> I know that's so corny, that's right? <laughs> but it's the truth. Success comes in cans, people. <clears throat> I can do all things. Yeah. All things are possible to him who believes. You like you can you can believe anything. We all have faith. Like how many of us have so, I prove how how much faith you have. Everyone in this in this world stopped wearing masks when the doctors when the scientists said masks don't work. So nobody wore masks. Now we're talking about masks for an invisible virus that nobody's ever seen. Masks don't work. But then they say, you know what? Masks do work and everybody needs to wear one and it's essential. And what did everybody do? They went out and got their masks. They went and got their Frankenstein masks there. You know, the fun masks, the, you know, burglar robbery, bank robbery masks. What, what did we exhibit? What did we demonstrate when we have shut down a whole world because of a virus? We're demonstrating faith. Mm. We have faith and the scientists have got it wrong so many times. And yet what do we do? We still believe them. And yet God's never got it wrong. Right. And we have a hard time believing him. Right. So you got to decide if we believe men's testimony, if we believe what men say, how much more should we believe in what God says? That'll preach. Right. That's really good. Boy, it'll this will set you free when you really get a hold of the fact that you're already living. You're living by faith. Living by faith is not e is not hard. Living by faith is what everybody does. It's just what your faith is in. Right. Is your right. faith in what people say you're going to die. You're going to get sick. You're never going to make it if you get the virus like now. Nowadays, we're so past the the physical effect of this virus 
Now we're dealing with the psychological effect of it, mm. the psyche of fear, mm. which we're going to dismantle. We've been dismantling. We're yep. going to continue to do that. But um, everybody has faith. It's just what is your faith in? Is it in the opinions of others or is it in God? Yeah. Faith is powerful, man. It's really good. Right? And winning attitude, you added in there. Winning attitude. Faith and winning attitude. Yeah. You know? Yeah, talk about that, man. Well, I mean, <laughs> we, we, we celebrate the wins, as you guys know, for moments. Like... That's just part of our culture now. Um, yeah. But it's so important to have it from an early age, you know, for, for children, for families. Yeah. Like, kids have to know. And that's why, that's why we have Champion Youth. That's why our youth ministry is called Champion Youth. Kids got to know that they can achieve. Yeah. That they can achieve what they put their mind to. They can achieve anything through the strength of Christ. That's with right. Christ in them. That they, like, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. Beautiful. Like knowing who we are, knowing our identity, we then know what we can achieve. We know what's possible. We know we have faith. Like we got to teach our kids and our youth of this generation to have that winning mindset. So No, that's so good. And we'll be happy with that. There's, there's hope, you know, there's, there's there really confidence is. in that. There really is. And, and I want to say something about that winning attitude also in a moment. But I want to read to you Zephaniah yeah. chapter 3 because it talks about how God, God, it's God's idea to have joy and happiness. Mm. Shout for joy, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away his judgments against you. He's taken away his, this is Come what on. makes you happy. Come on. The Lord has taken his judgments what, 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 we get so unhappy when we think God's judging us or we start judging ourselves. But he says, the Lord has taken away his judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. Come on. You will fear disaster no more. In that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, do not be afraid, O Zion. Do not let your hands fall limp. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will exult over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. I will wow. gather those who grieve about the appointed feast. They came from you, O Zion. He said, the reproach is over. Wow. You will rejoice. And he will rejoice over you with shouts. Can you imagine? Like so God good. is celebrating you right now. Yeah. You might be thinking, oh, if anybody knew what I was really like, if anybody knew what my, my worst sins, my mistakes. Listen. God knows everything and he rejoices over you with shouts of joy. Can you just embrace that God's wiped away your judgment and he's rejoicing over you with shouts of joy. Like he's like, yeah, <laughs> that's my kid. Right. That's how God is right. with us. That's how God is wow. with such a good verse. his kids, man. Wow. So, and joy and peace come from believing, mm. believing that God's wiped away your sins, believing that God's rejoicing over you, believing in the love that he has for oh, you. That's awesome. And let me get back to a winning attitude for a moment because the, two, the first two people that came to my mind when you said, yeah, don't forget faith and a winning attitude. The first two people that came to my mind, Michael Jordan and Tom Brady. <laughs> Those guys, they both won six championships. They both were the MVPs. They both... And what was it about them? What was it about? Well, Tom Brady's still playing, but Michael Jordan, we watched this summer was the greatest thing on TV was the Jordan. What was the it called? Dance. The last dance. That was the greatest thing that TV has ever had. So good. It's ever shown. Best show ESPN. <laughs> I, I don't even like ESPN much anymore, but that was the greatest show on earth. The greatness, the winning attitude mm. that Michael Jordan possessed. It was contagious. Yeah. It's like he elevated everybody's game right. because of his mindset. Tom Brady, scrawny little kid out of Michigan, gets drafted in the sixth round of the NFL yeah. and gets thrown in there because Drew Bledsoe gets injured and they're in the playoffs and he goes in his second year and he takes them to the, to the Super Bowl and they beat the Rams in the Super Bowl and then went on, went on to beat. And he had how many... Did, can anybody name any of his receivers besides Gronk? Nobody can remember his receivers or running backs. Why? Because he made everybody better. Right. He elevated everybody's game. That's the guy that made the difference. That's good. Michael Jordan, man, he had Paxson. He had, he had uh, 
Pippin, obviously, but he had just the whole cast of characters changed all the time. And he elevated their game and made them better. Yeah. Let me tell you something about how great this is. In uh, first, first Samuel chapter 22, and I know we're pressed for time here because I want to pray for you guys. But first Samuel 22, watch this winning attitude. So David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and his father's household heard of it, they went down to him. And verse two says everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontented gathered to David and he became their captain. Hmm. What they had the trifecta going on, man. They had <laughs> debt. <laughs> they were discontented and they were in distress. Distress is emotional. Debt is financial. Discontentment is bitterness. Hmm. And these guys all came to David bitter. They came in debt. They came broken. They came distressed, worried, anxious, mm. but they rallied and got around David. And the Bible says he became their captain and there were 400 of them. Now, what I want you to see is in Second Samuel, I want to I want you to see who you which is my last point, who you surround yourself with matters. Yeah. The power of associations. Mm. OK, Second Samuel. Chapter 20. So these guys surrounded themselves around David. They came around David. He became their captain and watch one of them. Second Samuel 23, verse 20. It says, then Benaiah was one of the three mighty men of David, the son of Jehodiah, the son of a valiant man of Kabzia who had done mighty deeds. He killed two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and killed a lion in the middle of a pit on a snowy day like this guy. What? caused him to be able to kill a lion in a pit. Like, first of all, he killed a lion. A killing a lion anywhere is a massive yeah. accomplishment. Yeah. But he killed a lion in a pit and it was on a snowy day, snowy, slippery day in a pit. He's in the lion's den, man, and he kills that lion. Where did he learn that? Yeah, that's the whole point. He surrounded himself with David. He got around David. What was David? David was a lion killer. Mm -hmm. And so what happens when you surround yourself with lion killers is you become a lion killer. That's good. That's why who you're connected to matters. Yeah. You'll only be as great as the people you surround yourself with. That's why our connection yeah. is so important. Stay connected, stay close. I know you say, well, we're out of the habit of coming to church. We're not out of the habit. Do not forsake the assembly together. We're still assembling together online. Yeah. And we'll be back together sooner rather than later. But nobody knew all that was going to happen. Nobody knew the psych, the psych, the psychological toll that this thing was going to have on us. Right. But we got to stay connected because you're going to become. Yeah. A champion. Come on. You're going to become a champion. You're going to become a champion because of the people you surround yourself with. And you get if you feel bad about life right now, you call our office and call one of our lion killers. You know what? You call and ask for Marla Hines. You'll find a lion killer in Marla. You call and ask for Balboa and you'll find a you'll find a lion killer in Balboa. You know what I'm talking about? Like we got lion killers everywhere. We got Jackie Mejia is a lion killer. Robert Ooh. Dick, Joe J.D.'s a lion. <laughs> These guys are lion killers and you get around lion killers. You start killing lions in pits on snowy days. Come on, man, we're out of time. So I want to pray for you <laughs> so good. today. So I want to pray for you and we're going to. Hey, the first thing I since this pandemic, God told me, don't have one service that you don't lead people to the Lord. Mm. So I want to pray for you right now to get saved right now, right where you're watching. If you're not sure that you're born again, if you're not sure you're saved, pray this out loud after me. You want to be sure you're going to heaven when you die. Pray this. Say Heavenly Father. That's it. Just say that Heavenly Father. I invite Jesus Christ into my life as my Savior and Lord. I believe. Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead from this moment forward. My sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus and I belong to you and you belong to me in Jesus name. You know what? That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes. And if you prayed that prayer to receive Jesus, would you just go to this? What's on the screen is this little book. Just click on and you can download this book anywhere in the world. I want you to get this. It's my gift to you. It's it'll it'll show you what the next steps are.
in this relationship with God. And for everybody watching, I want to close with this thought. Napoleon Hill wrote this after researching over 500 self-made millionaires. He wrote, men take on the nature and the habits and the power of thought of those who they associate with. He wrote that in 1937 in his bestseller, Think and Grow Rich. Who you associate with, so powerful. Don't get around negative people, gossipers. Be around people that are lion killers. Lord, I just pray that you would deliver us from the wrong people. Yeah. Surround us with the right people. Lord, we just thank you for this church connection. We thank you for our Life Changers family local, our Life Changers family global. I just bless every person. Lord, I thank you that you're going to turn us all into lion killers. We don't want to settle for being people that can barely make it out of bed, barely make it through our day. Lord, make us lion killers that yeah. we can kill lions in pits on snowy days like Beniah, a mighty man of David. Lord, we get to be around you. We get to surround ourselves with you and with your people. And we thank you for this privilege of one another. Thank you for every person connected to this church family. Thank you, Jesus, for every person watching right now, that they're family, they're connected here. And I bless them in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Give them hope. Give them confidence. Give them courage. Give them peace. Give them a sense of dignity and destiny and calling and purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Wow. Amen. Man. <laughs> wow. Joining, what a night. Guys. Seriously, yeah. it's amazing. Thank you for joining us tonight. For moments, we'll be back on, at church on Sunday morning. Sunday. And then next Wednesday again for another moment. Oh, man. Next moments is going to be the best, <laughs> but Sunday is going to be over. Come on the top. Awesome. Love you guys. If you need anything, you let us know and we will see you soon.